guess the Lord's ministration for us this prophetic season, in this prophetic window, is really to talk about the way that things are created or the way that the things happen prophetically. So our emphasis is really here. And we I don't know, we're talking about the same, the same thing every day in different ways. So I want us to understand something here. And we've spoken about this. First touch your neighbor, say, I hope your wallet is no longer void. Have they understood? I hope your wallet is not empty. If it is empty, I am going to release some money for you today. It cannot be empty. I mean it. Eh? I mean it. I mean it with everything that I carry today. Your wallet cannot remain empty. It cannot remain empty. The Lord said that we shouldn't be careful in this season in terms of our expenditure. So if there is money that you need and you don't yet have, before we finish this ministration today, the money shall have arrived to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible says, in the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. I want us to read the next part together because that's what I want us to talk about. One, two, three, go icon. And the spirit of did what? Let us say it again. And the spirit of God did what? Moved upon the face of the waters. Touch your neighbor, say, and the spirit moved. And the spirit what? Moved. Now, I, I want to break down something. This is highly prophetic, but I know you will understand it by the time we get to some place. In the natural, okay, the Bible says, and the spirit of God moved. Put, put a mark there on moved. What we are going to talk about today is transportation, is the means of transportation of the spirit. We're going to talk about spiritual transportation. And that is what God is going to release to you today. You will not move according to human, uh, according to the earthly realm. You will move according to the spirit. So I want to show you something. So in the earth, this is the spirit of the Lord moving. But I want you to understand it from the perspective of transportation as it regards the earth. You can decide. Yes, the other day I was telling you that people, I learned a new thing, that these legs are called transport. Were you here? Eh, these legs are called transport. So if they ask you, how did you get here? And you say transport, you mean that you walked? Or I don't know, you did something with your feet. But the means of transport, according to the earth, are already established. But I want to take you back. And I'm going to pick some scriptures. Just follow me. The Bible says, according, like from the time of Genesis, from the time of Abraham, when Abraham was given the instruction in Genesis 22 to take Isaac and give him up as a sacrifice, the Bible says that he actually saddled a donkey. So the means of transportation at that time was a donkey. I want to show you something. But yet this thing we are talking about is in Genesis 22. But in the beginning, there was the spirit of God moving. So in Genesis 1, we are actually still inclined in the heavenly transportation. But in Genesis 22, we have already moved from that cycle. And we are now starting to saddle donkeys. And we are looking for other means of transportation. In the beginning when God creates the earth, he gives us the most superior transportation. Because he knew that we needed it. And then when Adam and Eve disobey God and move out of that realm, then they start to look for normal means of transport. So I want you to understand that there's donkeys and camels and whatever it is you want to use, touch your neighbor, say bicycle and cars and what. They are inferior to the spirit of God and how it moves. So it means that the natural transport that we have is an inferior transportation. It's an inferior means of transportation. But there is a supernatural means of transportation, which is what I want to open your eyes to and what the Lord is going to give us tonight. And the Bible says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. Now, 
the face of the waters. The, the word to move in its own understanding means that you go from a certain place to another place. The word transportation in whichever form you want to, call, to use it, it will mean that you are moving a person or a thing from a certain place to another place. So today, if the cars have failed to move from Japan to here, we are going to engage the heavenly gear. God, I pray somebody is in this place. Mr. Wright Wabagani da America. We are going to engage heavenly gear. He is going to come through the spirit. Oh my God, I pray somebody is here. So everything that is earthly possible has been engaged and it has failed. But those, according to the spiritual realm, they are inferior means of transport. Now, the means of transport, regardless of what it is, whether you use bicycle, whether you use what? Bus. You use car, you use safe border, you choose whatever you want. You use Uber, it doesn't really matter. The entire point is that you move from this place to another place. Whether we be moving a person or we be moving a thing. Now touch your neighbor, say there are two things that are going to happen today. God is going to move you from the place where you are stuck and he's going to take you where you need to go. And he's going to remove, remove everything that you don't yet have. Everything that you need and is stuck somewhere. And he's going to bring it to where you are. That is the assignment for tonight. Somebody receive God's word with understanding. Now, this movement is a very weird kind of movement. In the spirit, the prophetic window, like I said the other day, the prophetic window cannot be opened without a prophet. But when the prophetic window is open, it is opened by a word. And if, it, if you receive the word of prophecy, or what we call a word of prophecy, that means that the word that you receive is the means of transportation to get you from where you have been to where you need to be. So if you come and you are stuck and you are in financial bankruptcy, the thing that is going to happen to you is the word. So when the Lord says, I have opened the doors, he has already given you a means of transport to move you from here to the place where you need to go. The word that you receive is the word that the Lord uses as a means of transportation. In the book of Genesis where you are reading, the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord moved. But it cannot move without a definite destination. So the Bible says, in other words, the other transcripts say that the spirit of the Lord was hovering. It is moving because according to the way it is designed, it is supposed to be operating. It's supposed to be moving. It's supposed to be doing something. The Bible says we are like the wind. We don't know how the wind moves, but we see the effects of the wind. So he's trying to relate the wind to the spirit. So the spirit is moving, but without a definite direction, a definite destination, it cannot accomplish anything. So it means that when the word of the Lord comes in verse 3, when the word of the Lord comes and it settles on the spirit, then it is telling the spirit, please move, push. I don't know if there's another man. Say move, push from point A and take push to another point. The man cannot see, but the reality is that you shall be in your destination by the time the word comes to pass. That is the point. So the Lord is trying to help us understand. In this prophetic window, I'm speaking to somebody. In this prophetic window, the word that you have received, if it is a word of prophecy, it is already means of transportation to get you from where you are stuck to the place of your destiny. The word you receive is what gives... Let me show you something. Ideally, I don't know if you played this thing when you were young. You put a certain paper on the water. I don't know where you grew up. Did you grow up, grow up at a lake or something? Or you use the basin? I don't know. But when you actually get a paper, this paper folds and you actually create like a board or something. And you put it on the water. You don't need to move it. 
It will move on its own. Do you understand? It will move on its own, but it will have no direction. It doesn't have an end goal. It doesn't have a destination. So even when the spirit of the Lord is moving, the thing that gives it direction and tells it where to go and tells it whose pockets to, to fill is the word of prophecy. So the word of prophecy is the transportation that you need. I am praying for you that your transportation is not a bicycle. I pray for you that your transportation is not a car. I pray that you receive the transportation that is from the heavens. The spiritual transportation. Because then you will be in your destiny in no time. There will be no time. And I want to give you some things. Let us understand each other. So if the means of transportation that the Lord gives us, according to the Spirit, is what we call spiritual transportation. There is a lot of technology in the things of the prophetic. I want to give you a few examples so that we understand each other. In the book of 1 Kings, which is a scripture that we read forever, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 46, the Bible speaks about Elijah. I want you to see this. The Bible speaks about Elijah. But the Bible says something very important. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And when the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, what exactly happened between the hand of the Lord coming upon Elijah and him running? It looks like the hand of the Lord just came upon Elijah and then he started to run. No. No. There is a technology there that is not given to you. Why does the Bible say, and he gathered up his lions? That actually means that he actually fastened his clothes because there is a word that had come to him that had already motioned him that you are about, I don't know, you are about to run faster. You are about to overtake Ahab. You are about to go at the speed of lightning. So you have to gather up everything that you have and be a neighbor, prophetic window. You had better guard up your lions because the Lord is going to take you on a supersonic speed. You are going to overtake everybody that started with you in the name of Jesus. There was a word that was released to Elijah. Otherwise, there is no way he would have guarded up his lands. According to the spirit of the Lord, the hand of the Lord does not come upon you and then you know what to do. No, the hand of the Lord comes upon you and there is a release of the word. The word is what instructs you on what it is you need to do. So when the instruction comes, the instruction or the thing that is released is the transportation to where you need to go. So in this situation, the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon him and he told him, you are about to overtake. First touch somebody. Say you are about to overtake your neighbors. You are about to overtake your peers. You are about to overtake in your family. You are about to overtake. You are about to overtake. This is what he's trying to tell you. It is not a mere thing. He's trying to say, can you please Get yourself prepared because you are about to go on a supersonic speed in 12 days. Does somebody say in 12 days? I don't know how many days they are to the end of the year, but in those days cannot prophesy to a man in the name of Jesus Christ. The same speed is going to be applied to you that you can be able to overtake the rest in the name of Jesus Christ. I need somebody to receive the word of the Lord. This is not human transportation. This is not human transportation. The Lord is trying to help us understand, differentiate between a man using a car and a man using spiritual transportation. That is what he is trying to draw our attention to. So touch somebody say, you have not had a job for a very long time. Say, so even if you've not had a job for a very long time, we are not going to apply natural means. We are going to release spiritual transportation. So today, you can have no job, and the next day, you have the best job. God, I pray somebody is here. Because we are doing spiritual 
transportation. There is a quickening behind it. When the Lord is trying to help us understand, he's trying to say anybody can go according to the way of the world. Anyone can go according to that way. Someone can receive their passport, receive their visa, and receive their ticket. When you don't have your visa and you don't have your ticket, and the other person gets delayed looking for money to actually travel, the other person who does not have anything, when they receive spiritual transportation from the word of prophecy, they get the visa today, they get the ticket today, they fly today, while the other person is still waiting. That is a natural process. This is a spiritual process. Are you with me? Ngambira neighbor, the word of God can come to you today and you don't have passport, you don't have visa, you don't have ticket. And he says, by this time tomorrow, you shall be on your way. And in the same way, you get a passport, you get a visa, and you get a ticket. And you go when others that have passports are still standing. That is the spiritual transportation I'm talking about. It is about making sure that the word that you receive is understood to be the means that is going to take you where you need to go. So that is why the Bible says, do not despise prophecy. Do not despise prophecy. Do not at all. I can actually stand here and I say, money is going to come to you. And people look like this. Ngambira neighbor, that is despising prophecy. I don't know if your hands are too rich to clap or to receive. I don't know. Are you understanding me? He says, don't despise prophecy. I've told you a thousand times, when you come to this place, you have not come to church. You have come to hear the voice of God speak. Your ears had better be alert so that whatever he says, you are receiving it. You, it doesn't even have to come to you. Uh -uh, you don't yet understand. If I call this gentleman and I say money is coming to you, if I were you, I would be fixing myself in this word because the same God speaking to him can actually release the same to me according to his scripture. He says, if I believe the word of the prophet, it shall come to pass. If I am talking to somebody about Muzungu, I don't know if you are here. Stop, pra Stop praying the prayer. When you go home, you start praying the prayer. But when you come here, the spiritual door, the prophetic window is open because the Lord is speaking and he cannot speak on a closed heaven. That means that the heavens are already open. If you grab that word, if Ah, Shamakata. Let me show you something. If you are alert, I can give a word of prophecy to someone here. And then the person who receives it receives the manifestation of that word before the one that received the word. The word comes here and says, You are going to get money by this time tomorrow. And then I grab that word because according to the spirit, the Bible says, If you believe, the word of the prophet, you shall prosper. It is enough for me to grab that word. And then in the reality, the manifestation, the other man that has actually grabbed the word receives it faster than the man that received the actual word. Why? They have received spiritual transportation. They've understood the word at a deeper level. So for every man here, if you have understood the prophetic window that you are on, in the name of Jesus, let the spiritual transportation be yours today in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout for Jesus. There is no word, let me tell you. The reason why a prophet would be I'm speaking about myself. I don't know any other prophet. Sorry. Mm. So the reason why prophets are very sort of careful with what they say, like it is best to just shut up. Eh? You just keep quiet. Especially when people cross you, you just be like, let me just shut up. Because the, the, this mouth is a creator. Whatever it is that comes out of that mouth actually happens. 
It happens the way that it should happen. So it means that if someone crosses you and you say something out of anger or out of something else, out of not being happy about something, that thing will actually stick and you will have given yourself a job to undo it. That is how important it is. So when I stand here and I say, my dear, begin to receive. It is because it is the Lord speaking. And when he speaks, that word you receive is a word that is going to push you to another place. It cannot leave you in the same place. Touch your neighbor say, you receive a word today. And your, resident, your, your residence changes. Oh, I need to transport somebody. You receive a word today. And maybe you stay. I don't know. Touch, ask your neighbor, where do you stay? Where? Mukono. You stay in Mukono. But when you receive a word today, it can transport you from Mukono and put you in Dubai. A word. Just a word. Do you hear me? Do you know that you people are here because of a word? Ask your neighbor. Some people are coming from Entebbe. But they are here because they received a word. And they did not have the money to bring them here before. But because the word was given, the means of transportation was released. That is the same way you are getting your answer before the year ends. I am speaking as a prophet of God. Let the spiritual transportation of the heavenlies be released upon a man in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I'm excited about something. Ngambira neighbor, tugenda kuja wano tukuteka wali. Boba wali otegedewo chicho. If you don't know where you're going, mm, that is not our problem. For us, we know where we are going. This is the spiritual transportation. I was trying to tell you, there are many technologies in the spirit. But the technologies are usually used to do what we call a spiritual transportation. I would like to call it the prophetic transportation. The Bible says about Elisha, I don't have the time to take you through so many things, so I'm just going to give you a few scriptures. The Bible says about Elisha, must be in the book of 2 Kings. So Elisha has this army that is fighting against him, against their area, the Samaria, the, the one of Syria. And the Bible says something very important. The Bible says that when the army came and surrounded Elisha, touch somebody, say he struck them with blindness. Did you hear me? Uh, now I'm taking you somewhere. I'm taking you somewhere that is going to be a very, very beneficial thing for you. The Bible says that he struck the army with blindness. First touch somebody. Say, whoever wants to stop you as of today, they are struck with blindness. Are you with me? Whoever wants to stop you, I don't care if they are in parliament. I don't care if they are at your workplace. Whoever is standing in your way, in the name of Jesus Christ, I strike them with blindness by the power of the Holy Spirit. They are not going to see you until you reach your destination. In the name of Jesus, I need to hear a shout. Listen, so in the spirit, hmm, come here, gentlemen. In the spirit, this is the technology we are talking about when we are talking about spiritual transportation. The technology can actually move you faster, literally. Like you start the job and you are at the same level. And then you, you are not allowed to stay at the same level. People keep wondering, why are they promoting you? Why are they promoting you? Why are they promoting you? You are at the same age, but the people that you actually supervise are a thousand years ahead of you. Because the Lord says you shall not stay in the same place. That is the window, the prophetic window that you have access to today. It will propel you. 
I want you to understand these things. They are simple things, but this is the technology of the prophetic. That is why a true prophet cannot be a prophet of deliverance or a prophet of, I don't know what. Of what? I don't know. Say, you know, church, your deliverance church, because you, after you deliver me, then you do what with me? You will be delivering me every day. Ngabina neighbor. Ask your neighbor, will you be delivering me every day? So this church cannot be deliverance church. It cannot be, there is nothing like that in the kingdom. Because if it were so, it can only be that the man is called to deliver people. After he has delivered people, he moves them to a person to teach them. You can't be delivering me, Manag. Even if I have a trailer of demons, they will all go. Don't they go? So after they don't go, hey, Jesus Christ. So koko wateko na iba tu kakase. Ngambira na iba mizimu tejiduka. Ngambira na iba weji malo kuduka. Ngatuda kuchi. You know, this is why people are stuck. This is why they are stuck. Because you came into the church with a demon, yes. And then the demon left. Then you stayed there. Ngambira na iba kufulu mori kwe kuingira kwe. I just want to help you understand. But like there is nothing like deliverance. So in the prophetic, we cannot say this is the thing to do. These are the technologies aligned or, or actually the technologies that are under the prophetic. Because you can do this to make this happen. You can do this to make this happen. You can go down to lift a man. Oh, oh. everything is available in the prophetic. So Elisha released what we call a prophetic window. But this window was blindness. Are you following? So, ideally, this man, you are the army, this man had come to kill Elisha. But when the entire army surrounded them, Elisha had power, listen to me very carefully, he had power to fight. And he had the entire host of heaven to fight. He can use a million trillion technologies. This is just one of them. And because he wanted the other man, his servant, to understand the power in the prophetic, he said, this is the army. He did not fight them. He said, you're looking for Elisha? Good. I am going to take you where he is. So he closed their eyes. Ngambira neighbor, transportation in Netandika. Huh? Are you with me? And he said, follow me. And he held the man. This man can no longer see. This man is blind. Touch somebody say, someone's eyes are already closed. I don't know who it is, but they are going to follow you until you reach your destination. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody shout. Listen to me. Oh, Jesus. So let's strike some people with blindness today so that they give you some money. <laughs> Let them count and they count and they count and they count and they are thinking they are counting what? What K? Okay, let them think they are counting 10 when they are counting 50. Do you understand? My father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let that be released upon a man who has understood it in the name of Jesus Christ. Ngambira neighbor, the person will want to send you a hundred thousand and they will send you a million shillings. I pray somebody is hearing me. In the name of Jesus, let that be so for a man in this house according to this spiritual technology. In the name of Jesus. Chiwede. Amina. Hallelujah. So he struck them with blindness and then touched somebody say the transportation began. Waliwa bantu. Amina. Katunda bagendo kuziba masu. Someone say for my sake, for my sake, for my sake. In the name of Jesus, that be you today in Jesus' name. This is the technology of transportation. The Bible says they reached the palace of the king. And then he did that. And they, began, they saw. 
It is a switch off and switch on button. If you need papers signed, we are going to switch off the person and then they will sign and then we switch them back on. Aha! I'm a prophetic window. Again, that Google all these things are available in the spirit. And I hope that you understand that this is the entire purpose of God in these days before we cross over into the other year. That is what he wants to do for you. Lift up your hand, your right hand. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every man in our way, any man that has to sign on our behalf, any man that must do something for us, I strike them with blindness as according to your word until your people have reached their destination in the name of Jesus Christ. It is done, somebody. <laughs> Tell somebody it is done. Hallelujah. That is the transportation of the spirit. We do things that just move people from here to there. In the thing that we were discussing yesterday, stay there. In the thing that we were discussing yesterday when Elisha says by this time tomorrow, that is a release of spiritual transportation. Lepers cannot move on their own. Even they have no business moving. Even where they were going, they are not allowed to go there. So there was a means that was released to them. And the Bible says that as they were going down the, to, to, to the camp of the Syrians, the Bible says it felt, it sounded like an army, a battalion of like four armies. Can you imagine? People with no feet doing like this. And then the other people think that the army, like four armies, four battalions have come. Why? Touch your neighbor, say, spiritual transportation. Are you with me? In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever wants to take yours, take what is yours, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a release and let it be that you're the man that receives the thing that has been spoiled in the name of Jesus. bitter <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? So this means that we are talking about will move you from the place of lack, the place of famine, and move you into abundance. It is just a transportation. Today, we are going to move you. Even if you are not ready to travel, you are going to travel. Even if you are not ready to travel, we are going to make you travel. You see, the funny thing is, in the spirit, in the natural, you need passport, mm -hmm. you need passport, visa, ticket, I don't know what else. Mm -hmm. COVID what? Eh, those things. Touch your neighbor, say, in the spirit, everything that is needed is already a tick for you. So we are going to move you and take you where you need to go in the name of Jesus Christ. The day must be today. Today, I want to show you something in the book of Acts, chapter 8. Acts 8, give me verse um, 36. This is Philip. Oh, I need to explain these things properly. So, this Philip is not the Philip that was with Jesus. This is another field. According to the book of Acts, chapter 6, must be verse 3 to verse 7. The Bible says that the apostles were busy and they had work to do. Of course, according to the commission that they had. And the Bible says, let them select about seven of the others to go into the rest of the world when God had given them that command. So this Philip is one of them. He's the evangelist, Philip. He's not the one that was the disciple. And so the Bible says... Take me back. 30 is okay. Thank you. And Philip ran thither to him. This is a man that was reading in the chariot. Someone said chariot. Do you see? This thing happens in the book of 2 Kings. Right? In 1 Kings. And then it happens again here. This is to confirm to you that the restoration of what was in the beginning is available to us now. I pray you understand what I'm saying. 
There was a time when they were using donkeys and many other things. Even when Jesus was here, it doesn't mean he didn't have the technology to use when he used the, gen the, the donkey, when he was moving into Jerusalem. But this is to make sure that whatever was already uh, taken away was now reconciled. This is the confirmation of it. That the things that were there in the beginning are here in the end. Amen. So the Bible says, and Philip went thither to him and had him read the prophet Esaias and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? I'm reading KJV, please. And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Now, first way, Philip was on foot. Look at me. Philip was on foot. Let me say, Philip was being transported in the natural by spiritual transportation. There is a man in a chariot. I want you to look at this properly. There is a man in a chariot. The chariot is moving. It is like when a man is actually driving a car. But you, you are on the outside. But you are moving at the same speed with the man that is driving. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is spiritual transportation. He, did not, he was not just walking. Walking is a normal thing. It is an earthly thing. This is the transportation of the spirit. And you will see it in the letter scriptures. So the Bible says, and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Next verse. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, shearer, so opened he not his mouth. Speaking of Jesus, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the onach, onach answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man trying to find out who, what the Bible was speaking of, who the Bible was speaking of. Then Philip opened his, opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Please. The Spirit of the Lord met an evangelist and moved him from the place where he was. I don't have the time to actually draw this biblical picture for you. So let me say for you. The man that is in the chariot. Let us say that man is on Kampala Road. Philip is in Chireka. And then the spirit of the Lord gives him what we call spiritual transportation. And in one second he is at the door outside the door of the man that is in the chariot. And he says, what is that you are reading? He is talking to a man on the inside until the Bible says, and he allowed him to sit inside. And then when he sat inside, he began to explain all these things to him. Next verse, please. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. This is after he has told him about Jesus. And he said, and the Bible says, he said, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? Next verse. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Next verse. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. Oh, I don't have the time. Touch your neighbor, say he commanded. Oh, Jesus. We'll talk this, about this another time. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Next verse. And when they were come up out of the water, both of them, touch your neighbor, say the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing are you following me the spirit of the lord is going to catch you and he's going to take you to dubai people will never see you again at the same level in the name of jesus christ you need to understand this transportation. It is as though something is actually moving. And then when the word is given, it actually propels it. In the spirit, what we call prophetic, uh, a prophetic catapult is that you are 
gentlemen, just go down. You are at a certain level. Amen? When you receive the word, it can move you a thousand steps ahead. Not one step and not one by one. It means that you have heard me say there is no prof process with the prophetic. Because if I give you a word when you are here, the next thing that is going to happen is that you must be here. You will move, you will jump these steps and just be caught up in the next position. I don't know if you hear me. If you are single, your next position shall be married in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are in luck, your next position shall be abundance in the name of Jesus Christ. By this prophetic word, may you be moved from the point where you are stuck and be put where you belong in the name of Jesus. This is a spiritual transportation. So when the word is given to you, there is a power embedded under that word that is going to give you speed. Touch your neighbor, say it only happens here. The things that are supposed to happen to you in months, they happen to you in days. How is it possible? You receive a word today and it comes to pass the same day. You receive a word today, it comes to pass tomorrow. Spiritual transportation. You have been caught up by the spirit of the Lord. This is the thing that the Lord wants us to understand. So if this is a prophetic window, in this window, when you receive a prophetic word, that word puts in control all natural forces. It sort of lifts you and it puts you on another realm that the earth cannot stop you. But you are now operating on the heavenly platform. That is what the word does. So today, Ngambira neighbor, transportation, transportation, transportation. Say it again. Transportation, transportation, transportation. You are moving from where you are stuck and the Lord is going to take you to where you need to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody celebrate Jesus. These things seem like simple things, but without the word of prophecy, they cannot happen. It is the reason why if you have not already understood, it is the reason why the prophetic is like at the height of that pyramid where there is prayer and then there is prayer and fasting. The Bible says we ought to pray always and to pray unceasingly. That is our first step. And then the Jesus says that there are some things that will not go away without prayer and fasting. That is the next step. And then we read in Ezekiel chapter 37 that when something has failed, something is dead, something is dry bones, the only thing that can bring it back to life is prophecy. It quickens you. Can you imagine what time it took for bones that have been lying down all those years to come back and become an army? Seconds. Spiritual transportation happened. Touch your neighbor, say, Avali Evulaya, Ngoyagala Balaba. We are engaging the heavenly year today. Amen. If your money is stuck somewhere, wherever the money is, I tell you, even if the money is not yours, we shall bring it to you. Wherever it is. Because if God has said he's going to supply us, why is he supplying us with what is ours? He should get from those people. The Bible says the sinner. He has given him a job. Say after me. Say the sinner. Say I'm not a sinner. I'm a child of God. Say the sinner. God has given them a job to gather and to collect. So that in this prophetic window, oh, the exchange can be brought to me. In the name of Jesus. That is what we are going to do today. All of us must move. By the way, I'm serious. This is the only thing I came to do. You must move from where you are to another place. Over your gala, over to your gala. Today is what date? 20, 27th. 22nd. 
Mm. 22nd. What a neighbor. Gamba. 23rd. Egenda kusanga. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Most of you are seated here. God, I pray. Sometimes I just want to lift the man. <laughs> I want to lift you. But you are standing here today. I guarantee you, if it is God that sent me, you are leaving this place to a better place. Same day. Same day. Same day. This is the power that is in that prophetic window. It has nothing to do with me. The spirit of the Lord is moving. The only thing we need to do is put a word on it. If we say travel, you start to travel. Touch your neighbor, say, I am moving on Heaven Airlines. I don't know about you. Say, Heaven Airlines. The next time they ask you which airline you are using. You say what? That one is going to open up all the international airlines for you because it supersedes all the other air airlines. Do you understand what we're talking about? So ngambira neighbor, lero, ogenda movinga by the spirit. God has given us free spiritual transportation in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody celebrate Jesus one more time.